A mysterious jet rolled onto a Russian runway and instantly set off alarms across the globe. Sleek, stealthy, and surprisingly affordable, the Su-75 Checkmate has captured worldwide attention. And now military experts are asking a critical question. Is this Russia's answer to the American F-35? And could it shake the very foundation of NATO air superiority? Because here's the thing, Russia isn't just presenting another fighter concept. They're claiming this machine is fast, stealthy, lethal, and cheap. For nations frustrated with the high cost of Western fighters, the Su-75 could look like the perfect alternative. But is it really a game changer or just another flashy prototype? Introduction to the Su-75 Checkmate. The Su-75 Checkmate is Russia's latest leap into advanced aviation. Developed by Sukhoi, the same company behind the Su-57 Felon, this jet is marketed as a low-cost, high-performance alternative to Western fifth-generation fighters. Unveiled at the MAX 2021 Air Show, the jet that instantly caught attention worldwide. Not just for its sleek design, but also for its price tag. Russia has positioned the Su-75 as a single-engine stealth fighter, costing between $25 to $30 million per unit. Compare that to the F-35, which can easily top $80 million, and you begin to understand why global defense circles are watching closely. Lighter, cheaper, and promising advanced avionics, stealth, and multi-role versatility, the Su-75 has been pitched as a fighter jet for the many, but can can it actually deliver on those promises, or will it end up as another stalled project? Design and Capabilities The Checkmate's design tells us a lot about its ambitions. Angular surfaces, internal weapon bays, and radar-absorbing contours are all aimed at giving it stealth comparable to Western jets. Reports suggest the jet will use a modified version of the Saturn AL-41F1 engine, also found in the Su-57, giving it super cruise capabilities, sustained supersonic speed without afterburners. That's critical for stealth missions, because Afterburners create massive heat signatures. On top of that, the Su-75 is being marketed as multi-role, capable of air-to-air -air combat, precision ground strikes, and potentially even carrying hypersonic weapons. Russia also claims the fighter will feature AI-assisted cockpit systems, helmet-mounted displays, and networked combat features, meaning it could coordinate with drones or other jets in real time. If true, that would put it closer to sixth-generation concepts rather than just a budget fifth-gen copy. Affordability and export strategy. The real hook for the Su-75 isn't just performance, it's the price tag. At less than half the cost of an F-35, it's being marketed as a budget stealth fighter for nations that can't afford Western platforms. Countries like India, Vietnam, Argentina, and the UAE have already been mentioned as potential customers. For Russia, this isn't just about selling planes, it's about expanding influence. Defense exports bring money, but they also bring alliances. And this is where the Su-75 could be become dangerous, not just in combat, but in geopolitics. By selling an affordable stealth fighter, Russia could undercut America's dominance in the global fighter jet market. In short, if the F-35 is for the elite, the Su-75 is being pitched as stealth for the masses. Comparisons with the F-35. So how does it stack up against the F-35 Lightning II? On paper, the Su-75 looks impressive. Stealthy design, modern avionics, and a price tag that makes Western buyers blush. But the F-35 has something the Checkmate doesn't. Combat experience. The F-35 has flown missions, integrated into NATO's massive defense network, and proven itself in real operations. It also comes with a global logistics chain, maintenance infrastructure, and allied interoperability that Russia simply can't match. The Checkmate, meanwhile, hasn't even flown. Until we see a working prototype in the skies, comparisons are largely speculative. The F-35 is a proven tool. The Su-75 for now is just a promise. Potential impact on NAT strategy. Still, the potential alone is enough to make NATO nervous. If nations outside NATO begin adopting the Su-75, especially in regions like the Middle East or Asia-Pacific, it could shift local balances of power. Even more concerning, it threatens the monopoly America currently enjoys on fifth-generation exports. If the Su-75 becomes operational, smaller countries priced out of the F-35 could suddenly have access to stealth technology. That alone would force NATO to adapt, whether by accelerating sixth-generation development or upgrading its existing fleets to stay ahead. Global reactions and interest. The global response to the checkmate has been a mix of excitement and skepticism. Countries like the UAE, Vietnam, and Argentina have shown interest, but many are holding back until they see test flights and proven performance. Russia's history
history of delayed programs like the Su-57 makes some wary. Meanwhile, in the West, analysts are worried that if Russia can mass-produce even a good enough stealth fighter at a fraction of the cost, it could disrupt not only military balances, but also the global defense industry. Imagine Lockheed Martin suddenly losing customers to Sukhoi because of price. It would change the economics of modern warfare. Challenges and doubts. Of course, none of this comes without challenges. The biggest? The Su-75 hasn't flown yet. Russia has announced plans for a maiden flight around 2025, but sanctions, supply chain struggles, and funding shortages could easily push that back. There's also the question of production. Even the Su-57 has struggled to move beyond limited numbers. If Russia can't mass produce that jet, can they really mass produce a cheaper stealth fighter in large quantities? And then there's the issue of trust. Nations investing millions or billions want reliability. If Russia can't deliver on time, or if the jet underperforms, the checkmate could collapse before it ever gets off the ground. The psychology of the checkmate. Beyond hardware, the Su-75 already serves a powerful psychological role. Rolling out a prototype, even if unfinished, sends a message to both friends and foes. Russia is still in the game. For potential buyers, it creates hope of an affordable stealth option. For NATO, it creates uncertainty. And in military strategy, uncertainty itself is a weapon. Think of it as a chess move. The name Checkmate isn't an accident. Russia doesn't need the jet to fly tomorrow. It just needs the world to believe it could. That belief alone forces NATO to react, spend more, and rethink strategies. In that sense, the Su-75 is already doing its job. The future of affordable stealth. The Su-75 also opens a bigger question. Are we entering an era of affordable stealth fighters? Until now, stealth has been a luxury reserved for wealthier nations. But if Russia delivers even a moderately capable stealth jet for $30 million, it sets a precedent. Suddenly, stealth isn't just for NATO and its closest allies. It's accessible worldwide. That has huge implications. Imagine dozens of countries flying stealth fighters in contested airspace. Conflicts would become harder to predict, deterrence would become more fragile, and the skies would grow far more dangerous. In that sense, the Su-75 isn't just about Russia versus NATO. It's about reshaping who gets access to advanced military technology and what that means for global stability. The Su-75 checkmate is equal parts ambition and uncertainty. On one hand, it could be a powerful disruptor, an affordable stealth fighter that shakes up the balance of power and gives smaller nations access to technology that was once reserved for only the wealthiest militaries. On the other hand, it could end up as just another flashy prototype, an ambitious dream that never truly delivers beyond the runway. But even before it takes flight, the checkmate has already proven its influence. It has shaped conversations in defense ministries, forced NATO planners to reevaluate strategies, and given potential buyers a reason to rethink where they stand in the global arms market. In this way, the Su-75 is already altering the air power landscape, not through combat, but through perception and anticipation. For now, the F-35 still rules the skies. It's combat-tested, battle-proven, and supported by one of the most advanced military infrastructures in history. Yet the appearance of the Su-75 sends a message that dominance in the skies will never remain unchallenged forever. Russia wants the world to see that it still has cards left to play, and this jet could be its boldest move yet. So the question remains, will the Su-75 rise as the budget-friendly stealth fighter that redefines air combat, or will it become just another headline in the long list of next big things that never quite lived up to expectations? Either way, one thing is undeniable. The chessboard of global air power is shifting, and the next decade may decide who truly can controls the skies. What do you think? Is the checkmate a real check on NATO air dominance or just a clever bluff? Share your thoughts in the comments. We love hearing your perspective. And if you enjoyed this deep dive into the future of air warfare, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and share it with friends who are passionate about military technology. Because one thing is certain, the skies are heating up and we're only at the beginning of a new era in aerial warfare. Stay tuned because the story of the Su-75 checkmate and the global race for air dominance is just getting started.